Today is November the 5th, and we find ourselves celebrating a festival that has largely faded into the background, eclipsed by Halloween's allure and the bright impersonal displays of official fireworks. There's actually only one in London this um, to celebrate uh, this November the 5th. And Guy Fawkes Night, Bonfire Night, once held a deep meaning as a national call for unity and relief from a narrowly averted crisis. And it may well be time to renew that sense of shared identity. Guy Fawkes, this figure immortalised in British culture as a symbol of rebellion, began his journey as Guido, a Catholic radical caught in the act of attempting to blow up Parliament. And the scheme famously hatched at Ashby St Ledger's near North Northampton uh, sought to eliminate King James I and his government, and it was a plot of calculated violence. Should we consider him, for example, a proto-suicide bomber today? And its failure led to years of obligatory remembrance through church services and national observances and bonfires. In a way, Guy Fawkes Night was our first Remembrance Day. That shift from obligatory church services to bonfires and fireworks alone was more than symbolic. It marked a transition from solemn national unity to communal celebration. Yet the core message, the relief and unity of the 5th of November, has over time been diluted. And today this celebration, this true meaning, is nearly forgotten, supplanted by Halloween costumes and treats. But in an age of division, could we rekindle its spirit? Even the name Guy tells a story. Once a slur for an unworthy character burnt in effigy, it's become a universal term, a friendly you guys that even travelled across the Atlantic to America. The transformative power of names shows how shared history can grow beyond national borders, even in ways we might not expect. And the customs that once defined Guy Fawkes Night Penniness for the guy, community bonfires, even the mischievous mischief night of November the 4th remain part of our shared history, even if they're dimly remembered. These events connected communities, gave children a sense of play, adults a sense of pride, communities a sense of purpose. Even more niche traditions like Lewis burning of contemporary political effigies or Ottery St. Fla St. Mary's flaming barrels show how local practices evolved to reflect contemporary times. This is a film I made uh, a, a couple of years ago in Ashby St. Ledger where the gunpowder plot was hatched. Let me show you this. Let me play you this. I remember being taken here a few years ago by an old school friend. My name's Tim, and in 1605, this in Ashby St Ledger was one of the places where Guy Fawkes and um, Tom Wintour and Robert Catesby plotted the assassination of the king, the destruction of the government, uh, what today we know as the Guy Fawkes plot. Um, Guy Fawkes actually wasn't terribly um, important, except he was the person who knew about gunpowder. He was the person who was found caught red-handed with 36 barrels of gunpowder under the um, un uh, under Parliament in a cellar. He was caught by Robert Cecil, who was one of the King's ministers, and really an early version of MI5 or MI6. Brilliant man. Um, after... Guy Fawkes had been arrested, he was brought to the king's bedchamber and the king praised his Roman resolution, he praised his determination to see through this plot. Um, Guy Fawkes said, um, I wish to blow the king and all his Scottish beggars uh, back to the, their, their native mountains. Um, Guy Fawkes was completely unrepentant, and this is something which I find so interesting about the story. Guy Fawkes was really the first of the modern terrorists, but more than that, he was literally a suicide bomber. When he uh, was being executed at the end of January in 1606, uh, the other um, three conspirators who had been caught and were executed with him, who were hung, drawn and quartered, a very nasty, very grisly death. Uh, Thomas Winton, Ambrose Rookwood and Robert Keyes, they all died first. Guy Fawkes was the last to be killed and he jumped off the scaffolding, hanging himself, breaking his own neck. 
an act of suicide. He didn't want uh, to be hung, drawn and quartered. Um, so there is an immediate parallel here between Guy Fawkes and, let's say, um, Osama bin Laden and his cohorts. Um, at the time, when we're looking at Guy Fawkes, uh, in Catholicism, suicide was absolutely condemned. Suicide is still absolutely condemned in Islam. Indeed, there are two verses in the Quran which explicitly condemn suicide. It's, uh, in fact, Islam is the only religion where suicide is condemned in the primary text. It's not condemned in the Bible explicitly. It was, of course, condemned by the popes in Catholicism, which is why um, Guy Fawkes was, you know, he can't really claim that he was doing this for his religion. Um, if he's so transgressing one of the primal uh, principles that you cannot take life, even your own, here we're coming to a church next to uh, the building where the plotting took place. Um, I, uh, the, the, the vicar of this church once said um, that it seemed a little spooky early in the morning. As well it might, Guy Fawkes was questioned and tortured by William Ward in the Great Hall and in the prisons under the White Tower of the Tower of London. Two years later, Ward put up a memorial to Guy Fawkes. There's an extraordinary inscription in Hebrew, and it's taken from the book of Joel, chapter 12, verse 22. What's extraordinary about it, to me, is that it's, it's written in Latin, but it's also written in Hebrew. And the Hebrew is um, fascinating. It reads, Megale amukot mine koshech v'yotze la'or Salmavit. He discovered deep things from darkness and brings to light the shadows of death. Now, there is something. I've, I've got three things to add before I close. The first thing is about this first word, Magalit, and it comes in Hebrew from a wonderful word, Legolas. And I always think that this word might have inspired the great J.R.R. Tolkien. It means to discover. The second thing that I wanted to leave you with is a peculiar fact. Is during the 17th century, when guys were burnt on the bonfire, people stuffed live cats into the guy so that when the guy was burning, the cat would scream. What a horrible thought. I, I, I hope Bay never hears about that. And... Um, the final thought <clears throat> is really about how, um, how, how important this event is for us in the United Kingdom. Until 1959, it was actually um, illegal not to celebrate Guy Fawkes, not to celebrate the 5th of November. Remember, remember the 5th of November. Um, and today... It's rather sad that so many people have actually forgotten what bonfire night, what the 5th of November, what Guy Fawkes means. It's so relevant for today, so relevant for an age when terrorism is round the corner. Terrorism began in 1605 in the modern era. Perhaps with a dash of silence, much as we practice on Remembrance Sunday, the 5th of November can be reclaimed as a moment of, for collective recollection, collective reflection, national unity, even joyful solidarity, a commemoration reborn, adapted to our times. Maybe the bonfire has gone. Maybe the fireworks are over. But today we should celebrate it as something new, a festival of shared resilience against not only past threats, but the modern challenges that so often divide us and worry us.